Hello everyone, this is Mr. Brain Junkie here, and today we'll be talking about a fantasy action film called Detective D, The Four Heavenly Kings. Be ready for some spoilers ahead. A long time ago in ancient China, a famous general called Renji was granted the legendary sword known as the Dragon's Blade that's capable of repelling even the most powerful magic. However, the Queen Zedian is furious at her husband's decision as she believes that it's too much power to be given to a single person and that Renji will eventually betray their dynasty. The king refuses to take back the weapon as he disagrees with his wife's concerns, forcing the woman to resort to a different tactic as she meets the king's royal guard Yuchi in secret. Zedian wants the men to steal back the sword, and promises that no punishment will fall upon Renji for losing the king's weapon, as she knows that the two men are very good friends. The woman brings Yuchi to the people that she gathered for the mission, who are all powerful sorcerers with incredible abilities. The leader, Tian, is capable of summoning multiple arms onto his body and conjuring flames as he desires. The team also includes a man known as the Spectral Blade, who has the ability of teleporting his giant weapons. The Fire Master, who's able to light anything in flames, and a man called the Flying Shadow who's capable of making objects disappear into thin air. Yuchi is not impressed by their displays, calling the people nothing but scammers and magicians who are not worthy of being given such important task. Before the man can finish talking, he notices something hiding within the shadow of the queen, and begins attacking the imposter furiously as he pushes the enemy back by using his weapons. The mysterious person is able to evade the onslaught and jumps effortlessly to towards the building, eventually revealing herself as a young woman who is known as Water Moon. The queen is very impressed by the abilities of the team, and orders Yuchi to lead the people into retrieving the Dragon's Blade from her enemy. They are able to lure Renji away from the Dali Fortress by causing crime in the surrounding areas, which gives them the chance to steal the legendary weapon while the man is away. Renji arrives at the house of a famous painter who reported all his paintings stolen. He goes into the building where the victim is crying over the missing work, but they quickly find out that the most valuable painting was hiding under the table this whole time. However, when his men try to grab the artifact, the hand becomes poisoned right away, while the painter begins spitting out foam and dies immediately in front of everyone. Renji realizes that this is a trap and begins hearing footsteps on the roof, while his man quickly shoots at the spy on the building who turns out to be the flying shadow. The main character chases after the imposter alongside his men, and are quickly able to surround the enemy from all sides. They try to capture the flying shadow, but realizes that it was a trap, as the man throws numerous weapons at the guards, causing them to jump out of the way immediately. The enemy goes after Renji while trying to take his life, but the man is able to counter all the attacks and forces the imposter to retreat into the distance. Realizing that he's outmatched, the flying shadow disappears into a cloud of smoke and teleports onto the scaffoldings, while Renji chases closely behind by climbing the structure. When the man gets on the top, he sees a giant spinning lantern and realizes that it was a trap, while everyone rushes away from the area as the machine spits out large amounts of acid. The people manage to barely escape from the attack, and Renji begins to understand that the enemies are after his life as well. Meanwhile, Water Moon goes alongside the Fire Master to Renji's house, where they're able to quickly decipher the puzzles in the room and get to the hiding place of the Dragon's Blade. The woman grabs onto the sword, but it turns out to be a trap that immediately sounds the alarm by dropping numerous jars on the floor and alerting the guards to the area. The thieves try desperately to run, but are captured by a massive net that traps them inside the room. The guards rush towards the house and charges inside, only to see that the people were able to escape by burning right through the meshes. Yuchi goes back to the queen to report that they have failed, and the woman is furious at the man's incompetence at dealing with the situation. Zedian decides to promote Tian to the leadership position and allows the sorcerer to plan for the next steps in retrieving the blade. Yuchi accompanies the queen towards a secret dungeon later that night, and tells everyone to wait outside while she goes into the cell to meet a mysterious prisoner. It turns out that this man was responsible for advising her to get back the Dragon's Blade, and now he offers her even more devious plans to kill Renji and take over the Imperial Council. The next day, Yuchi goes to the Dali Fortress to examine his friend, but Renji reveals that he already knew that the Queen was responsible for the attack. The man decides to give the Royal Guard a puzzle, and tells him that the location of the Dragon's Blade is 
within the riddles as Renji realizes that he can never win against the queen. It's quickly revealed that the attack was actually orchestrated by a sorcerer known as the Faceless Demon, who's from the same clan as the queen's prisoner, also known as the Wind Warriors. The man is the true mastermind behind stealing the dragon's blade, as he's somehow influencing the empress to do his bidding by using his magic. However, the main character is very aware of the existence of this clan as well, as they are the only people who desires vengeance against the current rulers. It turns out that the king actually used the clan to help him overthrow the previous dynasty, but after the war was won, he did not reward the people. The emperor instead chose to imprison the sorcerers and torture them with cruelty, as he was afraid of their powerful magics. Renji believes that this clan is somehow responsible for the earlier attacks, and their fortress is likely surrounded by enemies already. Meanwhile, Yuchi examines the puzzle that Renji gave him and eventually figures out the location of the sword as he rushes towards the temple of the four heavenly kings. The man jumps onto the sculpture that's holding a sword and sees the dragon's blade resting inside the statue's arms while he takes the item and looks at the weapon in amazement. Before the man can leave the area, the spectral blade arrives into the temple while demanding Yuchi to hand over the weapon or be killed right away. The enemy throws numerous blades at the royal guard, but the man is able to dodge the attacks and counters by using shurikens and knocking the opponent back. The two begin to fight furiously as they exchange blows, each aiming to end the other's life, but Spectral Blade is eventually able to grab onto Yuchi and strikes him continuously. The enemy knocks the man away by using his giant blade, while Yuchi desperately dodges the attacks, which knocks the giant statues down one by one as they smash onto the royal guard. The opponent rushes in to finish the kill, but Yuchi is saved by the dragon's blade, which blocks the attack and damages the enemy's weapon at the same time. The man grabs onto the legendary sword and charges at the enemy, eventually managing to shatter the opponent's weapons completely and knocking him onto the ground. Yuchi goes back to the palace after obtaining the sword, but he's very conflicted about giving it to the queen, realizing that she may very well kill his friend despite her promise. When the man arrives at the council room, he sees the others mocking him while Zedian arrives as well, and to his shock, the woman promotes Tian to be the new general in place of Renji. The sorcerers gather in front of the king to prove that they're worthy of the position, and Tian begins conjuring smoke into the air, eventually forming a thundercloud inside the room. The firemaster tosses multiple devices into the air, causing lightning to form under the clouds, eventually causing rain to appear inside the room as well. Before Tian continues the show, the clouds begin to darken as it grows larger in size, while all the majors are confused by what's causing the situation. Very soon, the statue on the pillar starts moving as a massive dragon comes to life in front of everyone. The creature turns around and begins shooting fire from its mouth as all the people cower in fear. The dragon eventually turns the attention towards the fire master and launches the flames towards the old woman, quickly covering her in the fire and turning her into nothing but dust. The monster roars at the sorcerers while the flying shadow tries to escape, but the dragon catches the man in the air and swallows him into its belly. The creature roars furiously at the soldiers before rising towards the ceiling and breaking out from the palace, while Yuchi chases outside immediately to capture the one responsible. The man jumps over the walls and lands on the other side, only to see a royal guard who's killing all the soldiers. Yuchi tries to stop the man, but is shocked to see that the person looks exactly like himself. The imposter runs away immediately, leaving him to be captured as a criminal by the guards. Renji is quickly notified by this news and tells his friend Tao to go to the monastery and seek out Master Yanxi for help, as the monk is an expert of illusions and magics. He tells his men to lure the spies away from the Dali fortress, allowing Tao to secretly exit from the back entrance, while the main character goes to the palace to free his friend. Water Moon sees this and begins chasing after the people, but is quickly stopped by the Wind Warriors, who decides to take her life as they no longer have any use of her anymore. The sorcerers begin using their magic while the girl charges at them, but she quickly sees the enemies fly into the air like demons. The woman tries to fight off the creatures, but is unable to do any damage, while the monsters quickly fuse into a larger demon as it chases after their prey. Water Moon is able to blind the enemy temporarily as she jumps towards the creature for the kill, but is shocked to see the face of the Empress, causing her to get stabbed in the stomach. The woman tries desperately to evade the attacks from the enemy as she escapes onto the roof and eventually falling down into the building. Water Moon runs quickly away from the pursuers as she tries to hide from the enemies, eventually arriving into a barn where she falls down from the injury. Luckily, Tao finds the woman by pure chance and is able to save her from danger as the sorcerers begin to conjure their spells on the civilians 
erasing their memories by turning them into nothing but simps. At the same time, Renji has made it to the prison inside the palace and is able to free Yuchi from the cells. He tells the men that the Empress is likely in danger and they must protect her from the Wind Warriors who are capable of casting very powerful magics. They are eventually able to find Zedian inside the secret dungeon where the woman is talking to her imagination. The people quickly realize that the Queen has always been hypnotized by the enemy as the prisoner in the cell was actually the faceless demon who managed to escape over two years ago. On the other side, Tao manages to arrive inside the monastery and enters into a location that's surrounded by numerous rock sculptures. Suddenly, a giant gorilla jumps out in front of the man and begins examining him closely before telling him to be quiet. The creature quickly turns into a body of smoke while a massive talking fish begins flying towards the man and recapping all the events that has occurred. Unfortunately, the entity tells Tao that Yanxi is not able to help them at this time as he needs to understand more about the enemy's magic before interfering. The man quickly returns to the back of the gorilla as they jump across the sky, eventually landing back to where they started in the beginning. However, the creature does offer the man a scripture that's capable of temporarily rejecting the enemy's magic before leaping into the air once again. Meanwhile, Renji brings the rulers of this country inside the fortress and reunites with Tao once more, while the man gives the main character the scripture from Master Yanxi. What they don't realize is that the faceless demon is preparing to attack the fortress after obtaining the intels from the fire master. It turns out that she was working for the enemy this whole time and the one who's responsible for summoning the dragon and framing Yuchi as a killer. Very soon, a giant humanoid monster begins to appear over the walls of the fortress as all the people stare in shock while shooting their arrows at the creature with no apparent effect. Renji sees this and begins telling everyone to recite the scripture from Yanxi, causing trees to grow out from the ground and neutralizing the enemy's magic at the same time. Before they can relax, numerous enemies are able to enter the building as they begin slaughtering all the guards on the walls and quickly overpowering the soldiers from all sides. Renji immediately calls for backup as Tao rings the giant bell, causing all the cavalrys to run towards the fortress at the same time. However, the faceless demon arrives on the rooftop as well and begins using his magic against the backups. The cavalrys charge into the building, but the soldiers are all hypnotized by the magic and sees their comrades as hideous monsters rushing towards them. This causes both armies to attack each other as they see the giant tentacles killing all their friends one by one, which are actually arrows shot by their comrades. Renji sees the chaos and rushes towards the battlefield while carrying the dragon's blade and manages to repel the magic by using the sword before his teammates destroy each other. The armies are able to regroup while Renji tells the faceless demon to give up, but the enemy responds by levitating into the air and commanding all his minions to attack. The enemies begin tossing smoke bombs at the people and manages to grab onto Renji, making him drop his weapon while lifting him into the air. Luckily, Tao is able to retrieve the sword as he runs desperately for his life, but the sorcerer begins conjuring his magic once again, summoning another titan inside the walls and turning all his minions into monsters. The creatures are able to overpower the guards easily as the people cower in fear, while the massive humanoid grabs onto Renji and holds him upside down. Yuchi sees this and rushes towards his friend, managing to cut the wires that are holding the men and freeing Renji in the process. The monsters continue to decimate the people while Tao throws the dragon's blade towards Yuchi, but the enemies are able to grab onto the sword and toss it right into their leader's hand. The demons all charge towards Tao to end the man's life, but surprisingly, Water Moon rushes in to fend off the enemies and rescue the man from being killed. The people stare hopelessly as the faceless demon holds the legendary sword while declaring that he's won the war. However, the villains always talk too much as a giant gorilla takes the weapon straight from the sorcerer's hand while Master Yanxi finally arrives to rescue the people. The enemy conjures his powers and summons all the monsters at the monk, but the massive ape is able to deflect the enemies as it smashes them away like nothing but flies. The titan begins walking towards the monk while causing earthquakes with every step that it takes and towering over the white gorilla. The demon is able to spit out numerous tentacle monsters at the opponent and covering the men inside the hideous creatures, eventually consuming Master Yanxi altogether. However, the monk is quickly able to overcome the magic as he throws the creatures back, striking the demon's face and forcing it to launch all its eyeballs into the air. The monster fires the projectiles towards the monk as the gorilla is being rapidly consumed by the organic materials. Master Yanxi is eventually trapped inside the eyeballs, allowing the titan to smash everything into pieces, but it's quickly revealed that the monk was able to outmaneuver his opponent very easily. The gorilla screams in fury, causing the giant monster to explode into pieces 
pieces, eventually turning into dust as it vaporizes into the atmosphere. Yancy lands on the ground and tries to convince the faceless demon to forget about revenge, but the enemy fires his weapon at the monk and traps the man's head by using his magic. The sorcerer celebrates maniacally, but soon realizes that he's trapped the same way like his opponent, where the spikes are constantly growing and threatening to end his life. Yancy tells the faceless demon to let go of his hatred in order to free himself, and the man is eventually able to unlock the torturous helmet after finally letting go of vengeance. The monk gently uses the dragon's blade and breaks the trap easily, showing that he was in control this whole time, as he only wanted to save the sorcerer's life. The people all bow towards the monk, but the man kneels down towards Renji in humility, as he returns the legendary weapon to its rightful owner. So what do you guys think about this movie? Let me know in the comments below. And if you like my videos, please press like and subscribe for more. I'll see you guys next time.